Thank you. 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 Thank you, Mr. President Barack Obama. And yes, it's that time of year again. And here I am receiving the Oscar for Best Leading Performance in a role of a performance of a role involving the environment and why the Iraq war was worse than Hitler and the role in the performance of yes, Mr. Obama, bring in health care now. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Hmm. What do I say? Millions of people are literally on the literal street because of the literal fascism of the Tea Party, literally, and Bush and Fox and the Tea Party, literally, and Bush. And thank you, thank you, thank you. Marriage equality now. Stop the madness. Not the church and not the state. A woman's right to choose her fate. It's about choice, people. Choice. My choice to stop you choosing anything other than what I want because I'm an actor and know more, much more than all of you. Okay, let that stop now, please. Sorry, emotional. Spend a few moments remembering all of the super wealthy, super privileged actors who died this year from drugs and alcohol. That's enough. Yes, I know, I know, we, we have no idea who most of them were, but my prayers, our prayers, are with you, and even though I don't pray, I know that my prayers are with you, with you, you. Hey, can anybody here order some pizza? Yeah! <laughs> Come on, guys, it'll be really funny if we play at being ordinary mortal people who have to worry about bills and money and a job and stuff like that. It'd be great fun. Yeah, look at us, not at them. Look at us, full smiles, <laughs> pretend to trip up, can't even read a printer, prompter properly, tears, prayers, tears, Obama, marriage equality, love who you want to love, want who you love to want, healthcare is a human right, just like pizza! <laughs> Ukraine, Venezuela. Oh. Not Venezuela, because uh, Sean Penn went there and apparently it's really great and everybody is equal and can get pizza and health care. And so I've forgotten what I was going to say. Ukraine, yes. Ukraine. Let the people free. Let these persecuted boys and girls who earn only a few pesetas a day and who only want health care and pizza, let them go. Please, please. Let, let me speak directly. Let me speak directly to all of you right now. I'm an actor. I communicate great truth to an otherwise dumb world. I act as a grand conduit. What is a conduit? Of eternal values and love and art and pizza between those of us who are beautiful and talented to those of you who are neither. No. <laughs> no, no, stop it. No, 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 don't thank me. Well, okay, you can thank me, but it, it's a privilege, it's a privilege. In conclusion, I want to thank, oh, there's so many people, my agent, my stylist, my driver, my chef, my makeup artist, my voice coach, my other trainer, God, thank you, Mr. President. I love you all more than I can ever say. Pizza, privilege, tears, false emotion, thank you. quite enjoyed it. I watched not all, but, but some of it. My 16-year-old daughter was sitting next to me, and she, she did retweet, and I think Twitter crashed at that point. And there were some entertaining lines. However, what do the Oscars really say? What do they say about the people involved and about us as well? One of the most astute and honest movie critics and writers out there is Michael Medved. He's a radio host and a film critic. He joins us now from Seattle. Michael, a pleasure to see you again. Well, thank you, Michael. Great to speak with you, and I'm glad you survived the latest long day's journey in tonight. <laughs> what did you think of last night? Was it uh, business as usual? 
No, it, it was striking because, I, I, again, your comments and your Oscar acceptance speech, which was noble and obviously carefully prepared, as they all are, um, was very appropriate to past Oscar yeah. ceremonies, but not to this one. What was striking about this one was the depolitization of, of the Academy Awards, and I, for one, thought that was very refreshing. There wasn't a single invocation, not one, of the President of the United States, which does reflect the fact, and everybody who knows Hollywood knows this, there is deep disillusionment with President Obama, even among those people in Hollywood who once upon a time had such a fervent embrace of this man that you thought he was going to get his own Academy Award to put next to his undeserved Nobel Prize on his mantelpiece. Yeah. But uh, that's not going to happen anymore. Uh, the, there were actually uh, recollections of God Almighty that were fairly sincere and moving. Matthew McConaughey, of all people, uh, gave a lucid and, and rather touching Oscar acceptance speech. No one came across like a complete idiot or imbecile, except for John Travolta, who... <laughs> who is a complete idiot. And it's almost this... <laughs> well, he is. And I, I, people were saying that perhaps... I think he's an operating Thetan in the Church of Scientology, but I think they're going to take away his operator's license. <laughs> what happened was he was introducing Adina Menzel to sing the Oscar-nominated and it ultimately won the Academy Award for Best Song, Let It Go, from the Disney animated film Frozen. Mm. And he's introducing her. He has 30 seconds to get right. And he says, and now I want to uh, introduce the wickedly talented, Adina Menzel was a star of Wicked, the wickedly talented Adele Dazim. And no one knows who Adele Dazim is. And it's not even close to Adina Menzel. Now, if you are a, an actor, he has paid a lot of money for the last 40 years to read lines that other people write for him. Yeah, yeah. And he can't even get this one name right? It's astonishing, and it's one of the reasons that we shouldn't pay any attention to what Oscars think or say or do yeah. uh, regarding public affairs or the issues that really matter. Now, you're, you're, you're absolutely right. When I was preparing my speech and with my Oscar, I, I, did, I do it every year, and I was writing, and I thought, you know what? Because I waited till this morning. This is a bit tough because they weren't actually as ludicrous as they usually are, and so I just sort of, you know, That's pretended right. they were. There were a couple of jarring moments. I, I suppose this was just form, but the, the actress who won for best, best Supporting Actress for what I thought was a remarkable movie, 12 Years a Slave, she, she's, re, she's received an Oscar for portraying some of the most animalistic, grotesque slavery and hum, human treatment of other hu human beings. And as she walks off stage, they play the music from Willy Wonka. Um, that, I thought, was right. <laughs> <laughs> the juxtaposition was not exactly uh, appropriate, was it? <laughs> No, they, they had another embarrassing moment. Tyler Perry, who is the, by a large margin of advantage, the most successful African-American director in terms of commercial success, uh, he comes out and he, of course, was born in the United States and, and grew up in the South and he's had great success. So Tyler Perry comes out, they were playing out of Africa. I mean, that's embarrassing. Oh. I, this was one of the, the they, this year they decided to play great movie themes, and occasionally they had some relation. When, when Kim Novak uh, came out, they played a little <coughs> bit of the music from Vertigo, which yeah. is, okay, that's appropriate enough. But uh, there was a lot of jarring material. But the one thing about Lupita Nyong'o, who won for Best Supporting <coughs> Actress, like, like everybody else who won a major acting award, uh, she didn't drool, she didn't stumble, yeah. she didn't trip over her clothes. She did. It, it, was, it was as if someone had said, okay, look, you're going to have uh, 60 seconds in front of a billion people. Try to prepare. Make it right. Say something meaningful. And, and they all did. And, and by the way, a huge surprise. The only political invocation the entire night, really, was from uh, Jared Leto, who won for Best Supporting Actor for Dallas Buyers Club. And he got up and expressed solidarity with the demonstrators in Ukraine and Venezuela who are demonstrating against socialist authoritarianism, exactly. not right. for it. That's a switch. That, that, that was really rather surprising. And what he said, I would have thought all uh, people of, of, of thought would agree with. He said, empathy with those who suffer from or died from AIDS, support the people of Ukraine and Venezuela. So, I mean, yes, if, if, if they were always like that. It, I, I do agree with you. Uh, Hollywood, uh, Barack Obama was not the messianic figure they were hoping for. Is there anything else going on, though? Is there anything else that maybe has, has shaken Hollywood into reality? 
Yes, look, I think the fact that, that this year there, there were a wide variety of films, a number of them very substantive, a number of them very imaginative. Yep. This is, by sort of common consent among those of us who actually watch this stuff, this is the uh, best year for movies in, in recent history. Yeah. I think there was also a, a sense of, um, not guilt exactly, but of regret of at least looking back with Rue uh, at, at what happened last year. Mm -hmm. Last year, a very great movie called Lincoln lost the Best Picture Oscar to an okay thriller uh, called Argo. And it, it was ridiculous. Yeah. It was one of those ludicrous Academy decisions that they make occasionally. Yes. This year, they were determined to get it right and, and to go for a film uh, of, of lasting value. Yeah. And 12 Years a Slave is that. It is. And John Ridley, who wrote 12 Years a Slave and uh, won the, uh, the, the best adapted screenplay for it, um, also got up. And, and, and I was so much expecting from John Ridley and, and from Steve McQueen, who won for Best Picture, he directed and co-produced 12 Years yep. a Slave, something about how the, the burdens of slavery are still with us and we mm -hmm. still live in a racist world and racism isn't over. They didn't say any of that. No, it, 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 was, it was dignified. It was, it was my, my, not politically preached. Forgive me interrupting you, Michael. It, it, it's, I'm being told by the people who run Hollywood that we, we run out of time or something like that. <laughs> I'm expecting music to be played. I've got to, but always a pleasure. So astute. Thank you so very much indeed. Uh, my great pleasure. And remember all future great performances by Adele Dazim. <laughs>